you need to get the legendary book on game, The Art of Mackin, by author Tariq King Flex Nasheed, available on Amazon right now. Can you dig it? This book has been a bestseller for 20 years, Jack, and the New York Times called it a classic. That means it's out of sight. So this book ain't for no lames who ain't trying to learn the game, jive turkeys. So if you're ready to stop slacking in your macking, get the Art of Macking book on Amazon and Barnes and Noble right now, sucker. Rated PG. That stands for plenty of game, jive chumps. Listen, are you ashy as hell? Do you have dry, parched skin? Does your elbows look like elephant knees? If so, you want to get your skin from crusty to lovely, go to ashkicking.com to get all the lotions, lubricants, and body butters that you need to get your skin in order. They got all types of health and beauty products, everything you need. They got incense, things to make your house smell good, things to make you smell good. So again, go to ashkicking.com. Again, that's ashkicking.com. Are you looking to start your own business? Millions of brothers have turned to eBay to escape the rat race. Become your own boss and get the Power Seller Research eBook. It's a comprehensive, step-by-step -step guide that explains how to start an eBay business. The website is PowerSellerResearch.com. Again, that's PowerSellerResearch.com. Check out the brand new album release by MC artist Robbie Blue, and his album is called Chapter 6, Birth of a Nation. It's available right now on all streaming platforms. His first single, which is what you're listening to now, is called Exodus, featuring Roxy Reese. And again, you can get this streaming album on all streaming platforms right now. And you can also listen to it on YouTube right now. Robbie Blue, Chapter 6, Birth of a Nation. What if you could write everything down in one book and send it to your younger self of the past? What would you say in it? Would you tell them to pace their self or brace their self? To prevent any paradoxical anomalies, we here at blackknowledge.online have considered all the variables placing the most important in the green book of black knowledge. Everything your successful self of the future would tell you right now all in one book. From ancient magi-like practices to health, financial wealth, and esoteric historical patterns. Support the Green Book of Black Knowledge campaign on Indiegogo and pre-order on blackknowledge.online. That's blackknowledge.online. Do you need a professional and entertaining DJ and MC for your next event? Do you need the latest reggae apparel? Book DJ Black Gandhi for your next occasion. Former full-time club med DJ with over 10 years experience at a variety of events such as weddings, corporate events, restaurants, etc. He can bring you what you need as far as your music game. He also provides authentic reggae apparel and merchandise, waistbands, jewelry, hoodies, dresses, everything you need. He represents Rasta culture right. Check out Real DJ Black Gandhi on Facebook and Instagram and also follow him at DJ Black Gandhi. Merch.myshopify.com. Our children are influenced by many things in this world, and music is one of them. If you're worried about your children listening to music that promotes sex, drugs, and violence, then introduce them to Gifted and Lit. Gifted and Lit is an award-winning program that combines hip-hop and cartoons to teach children math, science, and language arts, and much, much more. Gifted and Lit also has an amazing new home workout program called Gifted and Fit. This program combines social, emotional, learning, and physical fitness to help families get in shape together. Order right now and use the coupon code Tariq to save 10% off on your next order. Go to giftedandlit.com right now and join the movement. Bro, stop playing and start spraying. Leave an op on the ground where you stand. At all costs, yeah, make sure you protect it. Oh, goon juice, the formula been tested. You can defend yourself. If you find that you need a little help, gotta stay ready. Ain't no love in the street. Pepper spray straight to the face, make them get weak. Get it at ogoonjuice.com. If they thinking you slipping, then tell them to come get them some. If you packing this, you won't be lacking. But shot to the eye in them problems you having. Maximal strip hit them haters on ground. So you can feel free when you out in the town. Ogoonjuice and don't forget to show.
shirt, man, you gotta stay ready, that evil on lurk. Yeah. You are now tuned in to the incredible, to the legendary, Tariq Nasheed. On Tariq Radio. Please wear your mask. Are you a therapist, life coach, or educator that desires to write a workbook but struggles to get started? At privatelabelworkbooks.com, we have digital downloads of workbooks for anger management, parenting, substance abuse, and more. The workbooks are emailed to you on an editable Word document, and you can reprint, rewrite, and resell the content as your own. The choice is yours. Go to privatelabelworkbooks.com and take advantage of our buy one, get one free offer today. Go to badboymembership.com. You'll go from not getting what you want when it comes to you dealing with women to actually getting what you want, to being the guy women want to be with, women want to date, women want to have sex with. All you need to do is go to badboymembership.com. Are you tired of being overcharged and forced into paying a monthly subscription for your Mac and Windows software? Well, if you are, currently we're having a 50% off discount on all the latest Mac and Windows software, such as AutoCAD, SolidWorks, Photoshop, Microsoft Office, and much more. Our 50% off discount will be ending soon, so be sure to text us Need Software to 213-640-9738. That's 213-640-9738. We aim to please, so expect 24-7 technical support, the latest premium software, instant software links delivered to your email, and PayPal Buyer's Protection Guarantee. My definition of game really is just an understanding of human behavior pattern. If you conduct yourself this type of way, you're going to get these results regardless, no matter what you think. The reason why most guys struggle when it comes to getting women is because they're not attractive. Being attractive is, you know, it's a combination of everything about you. Attention parents and educators. Are you concerned that your children are listening to music that negatively influences their lives? If so, we have a great alternative. It's called Gifted and Lit. Gifted and Lit is an educational program that teaches students mathematics, science, and more using hip hop. This program will educate and relate to your young scholars and make learning fun and easy. Gifted and Lit can be used at home or at school and is a great family engagement tool. To learn more, go to giftedandlit.com. That's giftedandlit.com. There you go, get my volume going on. That would help, my volume was off. How's y'all, how's the family doing, man? How's everybody doing? How are y'all doing? Everybody come on in here. We're in here. How is the family doing? Somebody said a lot of commercials. Yes, it is a lot of commercials. I have to promote black businesses, but we're here. I am here, ladies and gentlemen. Glad to have y'all here. A uh, lot of stuff we're gonna talk about tonight. I'm in New York still. Shout out to all my New Yorkers. Much love to New York, man. I'm having a great time while I'm out here. I'm out here in New York. I've been all over New York. I was up in um, New Rochelle earlier. I was in Harlem earlier. Everybody's been showing me so much love out here in New York. I love coming out here to NYC. Beautiful brothers and sisters out here, man. I love everybody out here's vibe. Everybody is so down to earth here. It's good to be around um, my down to earth brothers and sisters, man. Love the love the energy of my my black family out here, and everybody has been so accommodating and hospitable to me here, showing me much love since I've been here. Oh yeah, got a lot of love for New York, and shout out to Savannah. I went to Savannah for the first time. Um, a couple of days ago, we were filming out there in Savannah, Georgia. Love Savannah, Georgia, man. The people down there, the brothers and sisters were beautiful. They were showing mad love. Mad love down there in Savannah, Georgia. They got some very good eating spots in Savannah, Georgia. Around that Savannah, South Carolina area, you got some of the best 
cooks out there in the game. That's where you got to understand during slavery, um, a lot of the white supremacists would get black people coming into those ports in um, South Carolina and Savannah. They would get some of the best cooks right around those areas right there. Also, because they were growing rice and they knew how to grow rice, they, they got all those good food dishes with that rice right out there in South Carolina, Savannah. They cooked their ass off. Let me tell you something. That's why in that part of um, Georgia, South Carolina, those areas, especially Georgia, you get these white women who be getting them recipes and then they start opening up them restaurants. My, my Savannah people, we went to a restaurant that was very good, the Old Pink House. All my Savannah people, I know y'all know about this place. It's a very popular place called the Old Pink House. Um, great restaurant. I think it was a, a white woman on it, but there's no way a white woman came up with the recipes. The food, are there Negroes in the kitchen? There has to be Negroes in the kitchen that they done stole some black folks recipes. Yeah. That's where Paula Dean got her black cooks. That's what I thought. That's exactly what I thought because I was asking certain people where to go and I had, I had a couple of Uber drivers and Lyft drivers and one of the white ones, I was asking him about restaurants. He was like, well, I can take you to Paula Dean's. I'm like, oh, I'm cool, I'm cool. But yeah, that's where the Paula Deans be getting her folks. The, the woman um, raised in Augusta, yeah, 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 yeah. That's where them Paula Dean types, that's where they get their cooks from. Yes, Savannah, there's a lot of black folks in, in Savannah. Beautiful black city. A lot of black folks there showing me mad love. But listen, yeah, um, um, the old pink house, the, the old pink house, let me see. Where. We went there, the food was good. So wait, wait, are y'all saying, wait, wait, wait. So, hold on. So who owns the old pink house? You went to college down there. So who owns the old pink house? Hold on. Let me see something. Hold on, let me see something. The food was very good. And it was jam-packed with white folks. So I knew somebody white has to own it. For, the, for all them white people to be up in there, somebody white has to own it. Hold on. Hold on one second. Who owns this damn place? Because I know it was some Negroes out there in that damn kitchen. Shout out to Charles Anderson. Um, I was in Denver for a day. We were um, Donna Mokel, that's the owner. Yeah, because it was a, a white lady who was talking to us and she appeared to be the owner. She, Do you like the food, y'all? She kind of had that Paula Dean cadence. She was a cool white woman. It was, a, it was a white woman who had that Paula Dean cadence. Thank you for coming out, y'all. The weather's a little, it's a little chilly outside, y'all. You know, that type of thing. But I'm like, I'm eating the food. I'm like, there gotta be some Negroes in this damn kitchen. The food was good. The food was very, very good. All right. But yeah, we were there for a day. We were there, we, we filmed, we bounced. But um, got a lot of love out there. I'm, I'll be in Atlanta in a couple of more weeks. I'm going back home tomorrow. We've been, we've been on the road, man, this whole week. We, we've been hopping from city to city to city to city. You, you dig? We've been hopping around like crazy. But yeah, I'm going back home tomorrow. But listen, listen, everybody get on in here. We got to talk about this young Dolph. Um, situation, guys. Look, rapper, as you guys already know, rapper Young Dolph out of Memphis. Young Dolph was shot and killed outside of a black-owned cookie store, a cookie shop that he liked to go to. He went to this shop to get some cookies and some 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 Dusties ran up on him and, and got him. They ran up on him and killed the brother. 
Um, where are my Memphis people? Let me talk to my Memphis people. All my Memphis people, where are you? Where's my Memphis people? And there was a lot of rumors going around, going around about what was happening in Memphis about retaliation. From what I understand, Young Dolph had a, had a beef with Yo Gotti and Black Youngster. And I don't know of some other people he might have had a beef with. But he was a brother, you know, he, he, he was making his coins coming up in the industry. He had a, a few hit records. Um, brother on the rise, family man, wife and, wife and kids. And, you know, some shit spilled over and niggas got at him on some dumb shit. Um, here's the thing. Listen, man, right now, we're in the middle of a race war. You you here in Memphis, and look, I love Memphis. Memphis has always shown me a lot of love. Memphis has always shown me a lot of love. I got a lot of love and respect for Memphis. Memphis got some real certified cats in Memphis. Straight up and down. Memphis was one of the first places in this country, really after slavery, to have some real certified uh, ass-kicking brothers down there in Memphis, some real true-to-the-game hustlers. People really sleep on Memphis. Really a lot of hustling in our community. And I mean, hustling in order to get your, your coins up and get your community right. A lot of the, the street dudes, really, a lot of the street game originated out of Memphis. When you look at the history of it, one of the first black independent millionaires came out of Memphis and he was running a red light district out there, if you know what I'm talking about. So Memphis has deep roots with having some certified, real stomp down hustlers coming out of Memphis. All right, let's, let's not, not get it twisted. In any event, you still have dusty stuff going on no matter where we, we see our brothers and sisters. We don't really have time for the dusty thing. Yeah, Bill Street, yeah. You had those pool hall cats. You, you had some stomp down certifies coming out of coming out of Memphis. And you still do. Memphis has always been a player, player city. But the, you know, with, with the good comes the bad. You know, you got the good and the bad. You know, where, where there's hustlers, there's going to be dusters. You got hustlers and dusters. And we, we got to, unfortunately, watch out for dangerous, dusty niggas especially when we're trying to come up. There's three things I want to focus on in relation, in relation to the Young Dolph situation. I want to focus on certain outside entities. I want to focus on how to really move and shake around these communities when you're trying to come up. And also, I want to focus on how to carry yourself when you're on the come up. Now, first of all, my dude got killed in his own city. Boosie, Lil Boosie, there was a video that was circulating around where Boosie was talking about how a lot of cats, a lot of rappers, they get hit in their own city. They get love in other places, but it's always a nigga in their own city that's hitting them. Nipsey Hussle. Yeah? got hit in his own city. Not, his, not only his own city, in his own neighborhood. What's the young man out of, um, I want to say Dallas. He was either in Dallas or Houston. The young man on the come up. They got him in his own city. Yeah? A lot of cats. They get him in their own cities. Um, Boots, he was like, yeah, that's why I moved to Atlanta. I had to get out of Baton Rouge. I had to bounce. There's too many haters that that in your own city that's circling around. Mo three, Mo three, yeah. Where did King Vaughn get hit? Listen, Bootsy made a very good point. Bootsy said the problem is in your own city, the little nigga who was in the third grade with you, that's the one who's hating on you. He see you coming up. He don't have the same grind as hustle and hustle as you. He see you moving and shaking, and he's still stuck in, 
and where he's stuck at. He didn't move and grind like you. And yeah, Soldier Slim, that's another one. Extentacion, that's another one in his own city. Hating dusty niggas got at him. But yeah, Bootsy said, it's always the little third grade nigga that you in third grade with, you coming up and this dude is hating on you because y'all started off in the same place and then you elevated and he, he made moves that didn't take him to where you went. So now this nigga's sitting up here seething with hate. That's absolutely true. And let me tell you something. Cats who get at you, these dusty niggas, it's not all, when, whenever it happens, it's never really a dude who was real close to you. It was just a motherfucker who was just kind of around. Those are the dangerous ones, those dangerous dusties. Because a lot of dudes who was real close to you, if you were close to them back in the day, usually you got a position for them, or usually if you're close to them, you guys are going to share the same type of hustle mentality. Let's be clear. Cats that you were really, really cool with and, and, and clicked in with, if you were cool and clicked in with them, your mentality is going to be somewhat close to theirs, and theirs is going to be close to yours. So if you're grinding, those niggas are going to be grinding too. It's always those peripheral niggas that you got to watch out for, those little casual niggas that you kind of hang around or hung around you back in the day. Go back to Nipsey Hussle, shitty cuz. Nipsey wasn't really close to shitty cuz. Nipsey knew who he was. He was in the neighborhood. I've seen videos of, of the crowds and shitty cuz is out there in the crowd. He ain't right there with Nipsey, buddy, buddy, but he's like in the peripheral. It's them little old sleeper cell hater niggas. Them little dusty sleeper cell niggas who's in the peripheral. You ain't really that cool with him, but you know him. And that's the nigga who's sitting around seething with hate because his game ain't like yours. Because you ain't close to this nigga, he ain't thinking and hustling like you. You understand? But this nigga feels entitled to your grind just because he stood next to you. You understand? The nigga think he's entitled to your grind because he stood next to you 20, 30 years ago. That's by definition, a dusty nigga mentality. You know why? Because a lot of these dusty niggas was raised by hood booger broads. Hood booger broads, hood rat hoes. They sat up here fucking on niggas and they thought any nigga who hung around them, they supposed to get something out of a nigga. You're not gonna really build anything long lasting with no niggas. So a lot of these women, these rats thought, okay, if I get around a nigga, I gotta get something. This nigga supposed to give me something throw me a couple of trinkets. So a lot of these fuck niggas raised by these hood buggers, they have that type of hood rat mentality. They think like hood rat chicks. They think, okay, this nigga was around me, so this nigga's supposed to give me something. How come he came up and I ain't got nothing? So you can't get this nigga no pussy. You ain't really got no talent. So now this nigga's shining, you stuck in Memphis trapping for three hundred dollars a week you doing some low-level nigga shit hating talking about well damn i knew this nigga 15 years ago me and that nigga went to high school together and then you sitting up here talking more hate into your damn self instead of getting up off your ass and grinding you sitting up in the projects with that little whack-ass triple beam work you got that ain't really rocking up on nothing anything substantial you ain't you ain't rolling with no pounds or nothing you fucking you fucking with a couple of little grams here and there. Yeah, fuck that nigga, Young Dolph. I knew that nigga, Young Dolph. Man, that nigga was in the 11th grade together, man. That nigga gives a fuck. Hey, we we got to get this, this dusty nigga shit has got to go. It's tiring and it's whack. It's time for niggas to man up. That's whole shit, running up on niggas, ambushing them because you's a fucking hater. That shit is corny, nigga. You don't get no points. Let me tell you some fuck niggas who do little shit like that. You don't get no brownie points. You don't get no street points. All yo dumb ass do is make the fucking block hot. Memphis right now is hot. Memphis is hot right now, nigga. Nigga, if you in Memphis right now, if you a dude, a street dude, a hustler, you ain't getting your money like you need to be getting it right now, nigga. 
You got to slow your operation down. Whatever you're doing right now, you got to put that shit on pause and slow motion because the block in Memphis is hot. All eyes on Memphis. Cops are running around right now, knocking on doors, asking questions. Nigga, the, the trap done got shut down. The block is fucking hot, nigga. You can't do shit. Memphis is so hot. Um, um, Yo Gotti, I heard his restaurant, they got security and police at his restaurant now because people throwing his name around. Man, the block is hot in Memphis right now. I know it's hot. Who wants that type of energy because of some dusty hate niggas going to hit a pro high profile nigga in broad daylight? A real thorough nigga wouldn't even co-sign no shit like that because it's pointless. Nigga, all you did was just fuck everybody's money up. Police is everywhere in Memphis right now. Police is everywhere. You hit a high profile dude in broad daylight in Memphis, man. The block is too damn hot for anybody to really get some paper right now. They probably flipping snitches left and right right now asking questions. They're knocking on doors everywhere. It ain't a good look. Yeah? Now, I heard they had a memorial. What are my Memphis people? I'm hearing so. A lot of people are just throwing rumors out there. They said that young... Black youngsters, grandma house got shot up. That wasn't true. So people get online and just clout chase. People start clout chasing. They're talking about curfews there now. Wow. So now they're using that as an excuse, to, even if you ain't hustling, even if you're a civilian. They're talking about curfews now. So now they they shutting really the whole block down. Yeah. They shot up his memorial. Okay, so now this thing is going back and forth. One person got shot today. Man. I, I don't know. That, that's, I don't know what people is. People are saying different things. I don't know. I don't know what's going on, but I know that um, the police were in different locations. Um, they had eyes on Yo Gotti's restaurant out there. I know that. So I'm hearing a lot of other things, but... That's not a good look. It ain't nothing G about it. Remember, it's always these dudes that you kind of came up with that does the most hating. The dude who was, who was kind of around and then they start feeling obligated. Same thing that happened with um, Jay-Z and Jazz-O. Jazz-O, very talented brother. I really didn't like how Jazz-O was coming at Jay-Z for, for a minute. Now, I think they're cool now. But I, I really lost a lot of respect for Jazz O when he started coming out talking greasy about Jay Z, and, and Jazz O was doing it really because, damn man, how come you you blew up and just kind of left me? Everybody can't take you with them. Sometimes, man, your 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 wave came and went, and that's it. Sometimes your wave came and went, so it ain't what this nigga can do. For, he probably can't do shit for you like that. Your wave came and went, bro. And I remember Jazz O was talking real greasy about Jay-Z for a minute. I'm like, oh, man, that's that's a bad look, bro. Yeah, that hometown hatred. That's a very bad look. Yeah, I mean, hey, Jazz, that Hawaiian Sophie thing, it was what it was back then. But, hey, it was a, it was a wave. He, did he change, the, he change his name? I, don't know. I, I think him and Jay are cool. But a lot of niggas, man... Again, this goes back into the plantation mentality. The plantation was a place where a lot of people were afraid to bounce. And the people who got up the courage to bounce, they bounced and they became maroons. They became fearless. They had a different grind. And in order for them to stay out that, man, that, that plantation, in order to feed themselves in the wilderness, they had to grind harder. And when you are a maroon, and this is what we're doing the movie about, we're talking about the maroons and the maroon spirit. When you are a maroon, once you get off that plantation, when you go out there in that wilderness, yeah, Big L was killed in Harlem too. You understand? Very talented brother, but as a maroon, once you get off a plantation and you go out there and you're living in that wilderness, you got to grind 
way harder than you did on that plantation because now you're grinding for yourself. Now, massa ain't going to clothe you. You got to kill animals and then prepare the fur to warm yourself. Massa is not going to give you bedding. You got to learn how to create hammocks and tie them in trees and sleep in the trees to get away from the crocodiles and the pampers and things that's in the swamps that you're living in. Master, master ain't gonna feed you, so you're gonna have to learn how to cultivate your own food in swamp lands and other places while you're on the go. Foundation of black Americans, we were very resilient like that. We we're very powerful people like that. So a lot of people don't have that kind of grind. So when a person gets their freedom and then they start being thorough with their freedom, the cat on the plantation is up there like, hey damn, you left me here, how come you didn't take me? Nigga, if I would have took your ass, we would have both got caught and I'd be sitting right back on this fucking plantation with your dumb ass. You understand? Some niggas you can't take with you. Because when you were on the go, creating your maroon colony, that nigga had an opportunity to go with you or that broad had an opportunity to go with you and they chose to sit on that plantation plicking the banjo because that was a safe bet. They didn't want to take those chances with you out there in that wilderness. Once you took the chances and you fought that fight, you went out there, you were grinding, you hit the block, you hit the road, and now you came up. Now a motherfucker who sat up here who didn't want to take that journey with you, they want to reap the benefits of that. That's where we get these little dusty hater niggas from. Say Nipsey and Dolph were cool, I can believe that. Nipsey, hard-working brother. Hard-working brother. This was a young brother, Nipsey, 33 years old. Not only was this brother making music, making albums, this brother was making investments. This brother was making investments in skating rinks. He, he and an investment company bought World on Wheels. This brother bought a, a STEM company. This brother, as we know, bought the, the Marathon store. He was making all types of other business ventures and business deals. He and I were going to work together on some stuff. This was a brother who was grinding so hard for his age that was unusual. That's why it was easy for those boys to find a dusty fuck nigga to take him out. Because y'all know my, my consensus is that they used uh, the people within law enforcement got their dusty nigga to, to take him out. But the fact that they could get a dusty nigga to do their dirty work for them. I'm not gonna let the dusty nigga know that he's not complicit. You're still complicit, dusty, ni dusty nigga. Yeah, my man was into crypto. Yeah. Say Dolph owned over 100 properties. Yeah, yeah, Nipsey was into crypto early, early on. This very smart brother, man. Very, very smart brother. Nobody, would, at his age, a lot of people in the industry, they weren't grinding and thinking like that brother. That brother was, he was an anomaly. That brother was, the, he was the one. Dolph, doing good things out there in Memphis. Dusty niggas hating on him. I hate that, you know, I saw videos of, um, you know, black youngster and them dudes from a while ago with the guns. Yeah, nigga, fuck out of here. Don't come on the block and all that. See, I, I hate when it gets to that level. I hate when it gets to that level. That's not a good thing. We got a lot of folks in here. We got a lot of people in here. Hit that thumbs up button, hit that like button. But fam, we gotta watch out. When we're coming up, there's a lot of things we gotta watch out for. We gotta watch out for dusty niggas. We gotta watch out for shysty white business people. <laughs> we gotta watch out for so many things. Dusty niggas, shysty white business people, and if we're making moves as far as activism we got to watch out for the feds and the cia because they're always lurking and then we have to watch out for the snitches for the feds and cia nigga let me tell you something when i announced that i'm doing the, the museum the minute i announced i'm doing the museum i got a call from some dusty fuck nigga that i ain't seen in 20 something years nigga called me up and i i mean i can hear this nigga i can tell this nigga's recording the phone calls nigga just start talking weird i'm like what the fuck is this nigga talking about just talking real fucking weird. And I, I can tell this bitch nigga was recording the phone calls. And then the nigga just start talking a little greasy later on down the line to other people. Right after I announced that I'm doing the museum. So I'm like, okay, you better watch out for these niggas when 
you get something popping, then all of a sudden, somebody tries to instigate a clumsy beef with you, you better watch out for that. That's agent shit right there. When somebody is trying to instigate some type of beef and they're doing it in a very clumsy way, that's some agent shit right there. You gotta watch out for that. When people are trying to use some flimsy justification to try to instigate some type of beef. Yeah, somebody said Isaiah Washington. <laughs> All right, yeah, I, I, I've, I've had reservations with Isaiah Washington. He was on some shit like that. And I know you're watching Isaiah. Yeah, there's a few people. The minute I, I make an announcement for something, I get a crazy phone call of somebody saying something, they're talking real crazy, and you can tell they're, the, they're recording the phone calls. Also, remember, when I, um, the minute I announce I'm doing the um, FBA conference, notice how strappy and, and, and tone tits, notice how they immediately cobble together a whack-ass, clumsy beef out of nowhere. Which show, and now as we see how they move and shake, we see that they're just shields for the Democrats, which they were on that all along. But the minute I said we're going to do the FBA conference, they jumped out the window with the shit. They cobbled together a clumsy justification to try to instigate a beef. You understand? Yeah, you done forgot about them. So you got to watch shit like that. You're, you're there in Memphis. We got to understand how we are surrounded by agent provocateurs, heavy. We are surrounded by them. That shit is real. I was with my brother James Small earlier. Shout out to James Small. In this new movie, James Small is breaking down information. And I, I did a quick interview with Brother Smalls on my Instagram, and we were talking about Malcolm X. As we know, today they announced, well, I think sometime this week they announced that the people that were accused of killing Malcolm X, um, two of the guys, they were exonerated because they didn't really have anything to do with it. And, and most people knew that. We knew that it was the FBI and the CIA involved in that. And James Small, he was around Malcolm's family. Um, as a matter of fact, he took over the mosque after Malcolm was, was assassinated. So James Small is very clicked in with that whole scenario. And he was breaking down how the, the, the security around Malcolm not just Eugene Roberts, not just him. We all know about the, that undercover Negro cop who they put on Malcolm, but it was some of other, Malcolm's other people around him. They were clicked in with the CIA and FBI, and he was naming them all. He was pointing them out. Yo, James Small, he, he's the truth, man. Yeah. So he was breaking that down. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, tone tits and strappy. We, we see them for what they are. But we have to understand, there's a lot of forces against us trying to do something constructive. We don't need dusty niggas helping. We don't need dusty ass niggas helping. And let me, let me say this, another thing about our artists out here, our brothers and sisters, if you are an artist Sometimes, man, you don't let beefs spill over or linger out there too long unnecessarily. Like my brother Ice T said, I see, like, you hey, look, man, I'm good. I, I'm, I'm square. I ain't got no beef, so I, I move. I alleviate any beefs, and that's what you want to do, man. You, a lot of times, record labels try to get these guys to to get into these beefs in order to to sell records. When niggas get on the internet and start threatening with guns and all that, you got to nip that in the bud. Um, unfortunately, our brother Young Dolph had been shot or shot at a few times publicly. You want to sit down with cats and kind of nip that in the bud, either through a mediator, like a Jay Prince, shout out to Jay Prince, or you just holler at niggas one-on-one -on -one and say, hey, nigga, let's me and you catch this fair one. We, we don't have to bring this crew or that crew in it. You understand? A lot of time, yeah, well, they think, okay, we're gonna do the 50 Cent thing. Yeah, 50 Cent got shot. Yeah, 50 Cent got shot, remember that. 
Young Dolph, yeah, he got shot in L.A. I know, I remember that. He got shot in L.A., I remember that. Yeah. Stuff like that, man, you got to move a little better. You got to move a little better. You don't, you don't show up in spots where you may or may not have a beef with cats. Yeah. A lot of times when I'm beefing with dudes, I keep it verbal and we just turn it into clowning and roasting. You know, we, we, I make it more lighthearted than anything. You understand? And when I don't beef with too many people like that, I try to keep it as lighthearted as possible because if it's going to get serious, then I'm going to have to, me and the nigga one-on-one, -on -one, we're going to have to see each other. If it's, if it's something that's worth seeing. Now, if it's just a dusty nigga, now let's be clear. Sometimes you just got dusty ass niggas who are clout chasing. You got niggas who are trying to instigate beefs because they're lonely, dusty. They just want somebody to look at them. We got to understand that part of the game too. You got a lot of lonely, dusty fuck niggas who just want somebody to look at them. They're failures in life. They never got anything popping. They're sitting up here, don't nobody give a fuck about them while you shining. And they're just, can somebody look at me? I'm going to diss this nigga and I'm going to get on the internet and start beefs so a motherfucker can just look at me. Motherfuckers just want to be acknowledged. They're trying to glom off another nigga's shine, which is the definition of a bitch ass dude. I have no beefs. I have no beefs with anybody because if I have a real beef with somebody, niggas can see me or I see them. Just like with Crispy. With Crispy, now I, I had no problem verbally clowning this nigga. That was, you know, he's a, he's a joke. But then my nigga kept making these gun threats. He kept talking about all this shoot him up shit he was going to do. He kept making all these gun threats when he was going to shoot me and He'll kill me. He kept making all these crazy threats. Then it got to that level. So now, then he decided to come to L.A. So now you come to L.A. and you're making all these threats. I'm going to go see you, which is what I did. We're going to nip this in the bud now. No, I don't, I'm not going to bring a br bunch of crews here, crews there. I'm not going to be no ambushing. Ain't nobody going to do no sneaky ass ambushing on niggas. None of that shit. I'm going to come see you face to fucking face. You got a problem, nigga. Let's move some of this furniture around. Let's fix this problem right now. Ain't no problem. All right, man, you do you and shut the fuck up. And you keep it pushing. We just going to have to do a head up. Let's just do a head up. Let's not play game. I ain't about to go back and forth with niggas on no internet. That's when goofy shit start happening and sucker shit niggas... A little ambush, nah, that's whole shit, nigga. If we got a problem, let's move this furniture around and let's get this thing cracking. Yeah? Yeah, let's just go and get this fade out the way, nigga. Yeah? But it, it is what it is. So I, I ain't got no beefs. I ain't got no beefs with nobody. I ain't got no beefs with nobody. You know, I might clown dudes like with, with Umar. That's verbal. I, I wish that dude was the best. I have fun clowning Umar. I, I actually wish Umar the best. I really do. I, I hope my, because I know what's going on with dude. I, I, you know, I know what's going on with dude. You know, you know we, we, my, my brother's going through some things for real, for real. You know, he, you know, so I don't take it that seriously. But situations like Young Dolph when he has been shot at and shot before, now he has to kind of take the game seriously. Now when, when cats have capped on you now, for real, if somebody's bust on you and they bust on you a few times, from what I understand, Young Dolph, he's been shot and he's been shot at a few more times from what I understand. So now if that is happening to you, you got to move a little different or, or you better politic a little bit different out here on these streets. You better politic a little bit different. Not to say you deserve to get shot or you deserve to have anybody running up on you, but if you're getting shot at multiple times and then ultimately somebody kills this brother, my man, you, my, my brothers and sisters, you gotta politic a little bit better. Alleviate the beefs before it goes there, before it gets to, to that point. That's what I'm saying. 
You don't don't let them catch you slipping like that when you got open ended beefs like that. That's for real, for real. Yeah. Nip all that in the bud. That's why I like Jay Prince. Jay Prince got Drake and and Kanye together. Jay Prince got them together. They they're taking pictures together. That infamous video where he kind of had people were saying that Kanye was looking like a hostage, <laughs> but. That's a good thing where you get an OG, you get somebody who can bring people together to, to, to alleviate the bullshit because that's, this is what happens when you let shit linger and you have two big names kind of going back and forth. What happens is the, the, the underlings will start going back and forth and then that's what the, the, the beef starts to trickle down and the lower it gets, the dustier it gets. And then you, you got niggas on the bottom trying to get a rep and trying to get some clout and they're just doing anything to try to make a name and then everybody's whole vibe is fucked up yeah so a, a salute to brothers like like jay prince who can sit cats down and get all of that stuff squashed out because the situations that we see right now with young dog we don't need to have that man that's not nothing that we need to see. And I got a lot of love for Memphis. I don't want to see Memphis hot like this. I don't want to see the block hot. You understand? Yeah, now the cookie place, they didn't shut that down. Yeah, the place where that, that was black owned, the cookie place, they didn't shut that down now. Ain't that boarded up? So now that business is going to hell. You know what I'm saying? Everything is going to hell now because of this damn one shooting. They're talking about a curfew out here. The memorial, it's, 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 a, it's a mess right now. Yeah. And then, let me tell you something. And also, there's a third element to this family. There's a third element to it. These hip-hop blogs, these hip-hop radio shows, these um, hip-hop interviewers, y'all going to have to start taking responsibility for promoting these damn beefs. Y'all gonna have to cut that bullshit out. We, we're gonna have to start drawing the line on some of these hip hop interviewers and all of these folks who sit up here and instigate these fucking beefs with our folks. That shit is gonna have to stop. Because y'all sit here and y'all instigate these beefs and then when folks, Vlad, I'm, I'll say some names, Vlad, and others, there's a lot of other ones. I, I'll say a couple of more, academic, all right? There's a few more, there's a lot of them, all right? Let us keep it a fucking buck. Y'all sit up here, y'all instigate these beefs for fucking clicks. Y'all keep these beefs going and then when people get shot, oh man, oh man, that's, that's horrible. Man, I wish everybody in the community comes together, man. This is this has to stop. What the fuck you mean it has to stop, man? You instigated it. Don't don't sit up here with all of that fake ass somber jive ass talk where oh this has to stop. Oh man, I wish everybody in the hip hop community comes together. No, you promoted it. You were the one promoting that stuff. Just before our brother Dolph got killed, Soldier Boy was on the Breakfast Club talking greasy about him. I didn't know they, they had some kind of beef. Soldier Boy's on there talking greasy. Now I know a lot of times you can't control what the the person you're interviewing is going to say, but you, you gotta nip that in the bud. Listen, you wanna see how an interview is supposed to be done? This is why everybody always goes back to the interview that me and Nipsey did, the one I did with my brother Nipsey. Look at that interview. That's how you're supposed to conduct an interview. That interview has been used. People call me all the time from the media trying to get clips and snippets of that video. That video is how you're supposed to conduct a video with somebody in the industry. We didn't talk about things that would put a target on my brother's head. I wouldn't let it go there. There were some things in that interview that some of y'all didn't even catch. I caught, but I played past it because I didn't want to feed into it that would put, so it would potentially put a target on my brother's head. 
even when Nipsey brought up academic. He actually brought up academic. He don't like academic because academic was doing some little slick shit. Nipsey brought him up. He mentioned it, and then we went to the next subject. I didn't let him dwell on that. You know, we, we talked about it, got it out the way, and then went on. Because I wouldn't want my my guy to say something that I know would potentially spill over into some street business. I wouldn't let him go there with that. You understand? One part of the interview, and many of y'all did not catch it, when I asked him about signing to death row, I said, did you ever sign to, um, to death row? He was like, um, you know, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a paraphrase because I haven't heard the interview in a while, but he said something to the effect of, um, you know, we, we kind of chopped it up despite, you know, that little thing we had with the set or whatever. And we whoop de whoop, you know, we we cool or whatever, but we we didn't really work with each other because of what, you know, there was a little situation between us and the set. Now, I knew what he was talking about, but we, but we played past that. I didn't go into it. But I knew exactly what he was talking about. And now that my brother's not here, I can explain what he was talking about. Um, with Death Row Records at, uh, at the El Rey Theater in the 90s, um, DJ Quick was performing. And it was a cat from 60s, from Nipsey's Hood, who got killed. They stomped him out. Some cats from Death Row stomped this dude from 60s out. That's what he was talking about. Now, I knew that, but I wasn't going to go into that. You understand? So when I asked him about death row, I forgot, you know, I, I, I forgot about that. But when he reminded me by saying, you know, the, there was a, a situation between death row and the set. Okay, oh, okay, I got it. Oh, let's move on. Let's move on. I'm not going to harp on no bullshit for no fucking clicks and put my dude in jeopardy. Y'all cut that fuck shit out, man. You get a lot of young cats on here, man, who's trying to get on. Talk to them about some real shit, dude. Get these young dudes on and, and talk about something constructive with them. Especially if you know better, if you're a nigga who knows better. Don't put these cats on here and you're trying to get some clicks, you're trying to get views, and then you put a target on the little dude's head. We gotta be more responsible. Yeah? Yeah, the, the song Use a Gangsta quick touched on that situation in the song. So, yeah, yeah. Hit the thumbs up. A lot of folks in here. Hit the thumbs up button. Hit the like button. Hit the thumbs up button. Hit the like button. Yeah, the dude's from 60s. He was a little bitty dude. I think the dude had like a, something was going on with his leg. I, I want to say he had a wooden leg or something. It was a little dude, and they just packed the dude out and killed him, which was, you know, so that, that became an issue on the streets. That became, that was kind of a thing. Yeah, so now I, I get where he was coming from. But some of these hip hop blogs and radio hosts and, and, and DJs and all of the, y'all gotta do better. Because keeping these little bullshit beefs going, it, it, they, the same thing with Tupac and Biggie, man. And a lot of people criticize Vibe magazine for promoting that East-West thing. You know, these major corporations, they were promoting that stuff. Vibe magazine, owned by Warner, was putting out, hey, the East versus West. So they're putting this thing out all over the world. They're bigging this thing. They're really promoting it. They're promoting this thing heavy. Because they know they're not going to get touched. The backlash is going to trickle down on us. They know what they're doing. They know exactly what they're doing. So that doesn't exonerate the people outside of the neighborhood, but we have to say, hey, we're going to have a certain culture and a code where we're not going to allow dustiness. We're not going to let these dusty niggas take out folks and, and, and understand we can't control everybody we have to be able to protect ourselves and sometimes we gotta get away from the dusty ass niggas who are lurking around with hatred in their heart with nothing to lose you gotta understand certain niggas man they're so dusty 
and they hate themselves so much. Look, you got niggas who sat up here while you were grinding, while you were hustling, while you were writing your songs, while you were building whatever you needed to build, while you were studying your books. Niggas out here smoking crack and drinking um, lean and popping pills and fucking with hood rats and all this other shit, knocking old raggedy broads up. And these niggas made fucked up choices and fucked up decisions and they get fucked up results and they look at you and think just because you and this nigga hung out or kicked it back in the day, he deserves what the fuck you get. No, you don't, nigga. And if you shining, watch out for these dusty fuck niggas. They have nothing to lose. In fact, we got to start staying as far away from dusty niggas as we can. Dusty niggas ain't got shit to lose. And we got this thing where niggas try to shame you into elevating dusty ass niggas who ain't worthy of elevation. Nigga, you in the dust for a reason, motherfucker. Some of these niggas gotta stay in the dust. Your job is to stay away from some of these niggas. Just like Neely Fuller says, some black folks you gotta stay away from, they're too damn poisonous. The white supremacists, they done put too much poison in them. Don't let nobody shame you into believing that you gotta be all buddy-buddy with some old dusty-ass nigga who ain't got the same grind as you. Now, just because a dude don't have no money, that doesn't mean he's dusty. Let's say a nigga who's out here, he ain't got his, he ain't got on yet, but the dude is trying, he's grinding. A real nigga can see somebody who has potential, and if he can be an asset to what you got going on, yeah, you can bring them in. You understand? Your grind don't really have anything to do with your money. You got some people out here who don't have no money yet, but they got the will to grind, and they got some know-how, and a lot of them are younger folks. Notice... The dusty niggas are usually the niggas that's been the niggas that you've been knowing 10 years plus. You, you dig? It's the 10 years plus niggas. That dusty nigga gene kicks in at around 28 for some niggas. Yeah? Because usually you're fresh out of high school, and by the time you're 28, you're getting around 30. You're seeing 30. You're around 28. You're seeing 30. And a lot of those niggas, the 28 and the 27-year-olds who didn't get shit popping, they're the ones who's mad at the rappers. The rappers then graduated. He didn't came up. He's grinding. So now that dusty nigga who was in high school with you, who was in the band with you, now nah, this nigga sitting around like, well, damn, I can rap. I, 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 this nigga, just, I can rap too. So now this nigga's looking for justification to try to sneak up on you and ambush you. Yeah, shout out to the rapper The Baby. You say The Baby had to fight all these niggas in North Carolina. The Baby went to the mall. Ba the rapper The Baby had to fight a nigga at the mall, knock a nigga out at the mall, a hating ass nigga. It was a hating, clout chasing nigga. A nigga ran up on Baby at the mall. Baby, you ain't, you don't be keeping it real, baby. And Baby had to whoop this nigga's ass. And the bitch nigga whose ass he whooped, the nigga all on the internet trying to get clout off his ass whooping. Um, what's up, y'all? Um, I just got beat up by the Baby. Um, y'all can get my mixtape. Um, the beat goes on right now. I got my own record label. Got production company. Yeah, I, I had got beat up at the mall. And that's going to be the name of my new mixtape. Be down at the mall, y'all. The nigga actually tried to get clout off getting his ass whooped. You, that's the dustiest type of nigga. Niggas be so dusty, they can't even justify the dust. Remember when the rapper Plies, Plies was doing a concert. A dusty nigga got on stage. And, and Plies was like, you know, he, the, the nigga was in the audience saying something. Plies was like, come on up, stay, come on up here, man. He's like, what, what's, up? what's going on with you? The nigga grabbed Plies and threw him off the stage just for no reason. And that dusty nigga was doing a clout chasing interview. Yo, what's up? Um, I had threw Plies off the stage and his bodyguards had beat me up. Uh, I rap too. Um, follow me on Twitter at DustyNigga33. Dusty bitch ass niggas like that 
when you just, you would do anything for some fucking attention, you are the worst. You are the fucking worst. Niggas who just hate on niggas simply to get you some damn attention. A grown ass nigga trying to get attention, dustifying, justifying the dust. A, a dusty nigga attention whore. And the worst kind of haters are them old haters, them old middle aged dusty niggas. Because them niggas, let me tell you something, them niggas about to die. Some of these old middle-aged niggas who see people around their same age or older shining, these niggas didn't accomplish shit. They done fucked around doing the dumbest bullshit imaginable all their lives. They see another nigga shining and gleaming, and that's a mirror to them. When your shine shines a light on how dusty they are, the, the, the more you shine, the more dust shows up. You ever look at, like, you, you're sitting in the living room and you see the sun rays hit a room and you can see dust particles? You see dust particles. Whenever sunlight comes in the room, you can see the dust particles in the air. It's like that with dusty niggas. When they see a nigga that they were around back in the day and the nigga is now shining, all the dust particles are showing like, damn, I'm sorry as fuck. I'm a trash ass nigga. It's hard to say that, so you have to turn it around. Oh, that nigga ain't keeping it 100. That nigga done forgot where he had came from. It's that dusty nigga talk. Because motherfuckers want to sit around doing dumb shit and now you about to die you about to die any moment. So if I, um, since you going out and you haven't accomplished shit, let me throw some of this dust on the nigga who's shining. Let me throw some dust on this nigga before I go. I hate dusty niggas with a passion because y'all are the same niggas on the plantation thwarting us getting up out of here. Let me tell you something, family. We're talking about this in the Maroon movie. Anytime we battled the white supremacists, you know why we got defeated, family? You want to know why we're in the situation now? The reason why we're in the situation, and I was talking to my brother James Small about some of the wars that we were having. Let me tell you something. Black people, historically, especially foundational black Americans, we were whooping these white supremacist asses. Even in Africa, we, we can talk about Africa too. We were whooping ass. The problem was, once we got a leg up on the white supremacist, it was either one of our allies or our neighboring dusty nigga who sold us out. Do you understand what I'm saying? The reason why black folks are in a situation where we're under the thumb of the white supremacist is really because dusty niggas were selling us out. When we start looking at wars, and battles, look at when these folks started getting a leg up on us. They would get the dusty niggas to come and infiltrate us. Look at wars. Look, look, look at wars, man. We're talking about the Yamasi War. These were black aboriginal people fighting the white supremacists. What happened was we were trying to ally with some of these red natives. In some cases, we allied with them and it worked out, which is what the Seminole situation was. We allied, it was black people allying with some of the red natives. And that situation worked out to a certain degree. When black folks tried to ally with other Native American groups who were under the thumb of the white supremacists, these motherfuckers sold us out. That's what happened with the Yamasee War. It was some of those red natives from, I want to say the Cherokee or the Creeks, one of, one of those Creeks, one of those Cherokees or Creeks, but they were the ones selling brothers out. You understand? It's the traitors among us that serve us up. Those dusty ass folks that serve us up. 
like now. Whenever we start, listen, whenever we start talking about white supremacy, whenever we start getting white supremacy on the ropes, we get dusty niggas from the right and left. We get the Candace Owens and people like that. And even from the left, we get these niggas, they'll talk about white supremacy, then they'll flip it. Oh, this white supremacy is bad. That's why we got to do something to help immigrants. The hell does that mean? Oh, this white supremacy is bad. Oh, this is they good. We got to do something for the LGBT. Yeah, the Red Creeks would help kill off the Black Creeks in Alabama. Yes, they did. Um, I want to say the Choctaw. It was, we, we go into this in the movie, man. In the movie, we go into this. We go into how some of these allies sold us the hell out. Brother James Small was going into it. Brother Randy Short was going into it. But we, we, were, we got some heavyweights spitting some real good game talking about the battle between the red natives and the black aboriginals and the red natives selling us out. We were even going into how some of the white-skinned Arabs were selling out the black-skinned Moors going back into Spain, even now. You, you understand? We have to look at that situation, how the Moors fell because a lot of the pale-skinned Arabs got with the so-called white Christians and we're selling the black moors out. We got to go into all this stuff. See, we, this is why we have to deconstruct history to see where we went wrong and how we can stop making these mistakes. We start allying with these people who flip on us. We got to learn how to not ally with, with other people who don't have our best interests at hand and how not to ally with dusty niggas. We gotta identify dusty hate niggas around us. You understand? It's real out here. But did y'all see, what's that black athlete's name? This former guy, he plays for the, I think he used to play for the Jets. What's this dude's name? Um, Hey, what, what is this guy's name? I can't think of his name. Played for St. Louis. Uh, I, wonder, I think he played for St. Louis. He used to play. He doesn't play no more. And they got this nigga on video beating up his white girlfriend. Nigga. Shaka Zulu. Yeah, yeah. They sold out Shaka Zulu. What's that athlete? Yeah, Zach Lacey. Lord. Did they catch him yet? Because they're going to throw him under the bus. Yeah, this nigga was on video. He was beating that white woman up. This nigga was throwing her all in TVs and the whole shebang. It is a wrap. Well, they're going to make an example out of that nigga. He is a former running back. Dude. Nigga, if it, it don't never let it get that bad. Yeah, I don't know what happened, but nigga, don't, don't let your simping get that bad. Yeah, that white woman, she's going to milk this nigga. And it's, it's a wrap for you. Yeah, they're going to throw all the charges on this dude. He played for the St. Louis Rams. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, he went on the run. Yeah, yeah. They said that um, he, he was in Florida. He might not be in Florida no more. Yeah, this nigga. You nigga, your simping should never get to that level. Yeah, he's black. Yeah, I, I don't know if he's FBA or non-FBA. I don't know. Yeah, that type of shit. Throwing the white woman around. Oh, come on, bro. Says she allegedly stole 500 k from him. Okay. I don't know about that. I don't know. That I don't know about the details of what happened. But listen. Yeah, this nigga, he was doing the most. Who was that? Who my, this is my real estate person calling. Okay. Okay, I got to call my real estate person in a minute. Okay. Hopefully, this is my real estate person. Hopefully, it's about the damn museum. Shit. Okay, my real estate person is calling me randomly. Oh, real estate. Okay, I'm, I get that when I'm done with you guys. I get that when I'm done with talking with the brothers and sisters here. Yeah, that was very hard to watch. 
yeah, 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 she kept talking. Yeah, and, and truth be told, I, I don't know he shouldn't have done all that, but she was kind of eating them damn punches, though. So that, that don't sound like it was anything new. That white woman was eating them fucking punches, nigga. She was kind of casual with the, this nigga throwing her around. Okay, so he, this, is, this must be a thing. I'm like, damn. This is a little bitty white woman. He picked her up and threw her in a TV. She got up. Come on now. How'd you do that? He threw her ass again. He's socking her all in the head. Like, Come on. Is this what you're doing? I'm like, damn. She ate that. Yeah, she was very casual with that. I'm like, damn, brother. Yeah, some people saying that brother has CTE. Yeah, but that that wasn't cool. That wasn't cool at all. Yeah, that wasn't cool at all. And and it looked like she was used to the ass whoopings, and looked like she set the cameras up so that she can get them ass whoopings on every angle. It was an it was like a couple of camera angles for the mass whoopings. I'm like, what the hell? So yeah, she set the camera up. She got different angles, a side view, a left view, a wide shot. She, so she was getting different angles of that beat. Like, damn. Bruh, come on, man. Come on, brother. Well, I saw a video. I saw one video. Let me go to my Instagram real quick. Hopefully, I can log into it. I want to say this was on Snoop's page. Oh, let me see if I can log into my Instagram. I saw some simp shit. Hold on. Hold on. Let me see. Let me go to Snoop's page. Shout out to my brother Snoop Dogg. Okay, where we at? And where's Snoop Dogg's page? Come on, Snoop. Where's your page at, brother? Here's Snoop Dogg's page. Oh, yeah, they're doing the verses right now. I got to check out the verses. Hold on. Where's Snoop Dogg's page? They got a shout, man? Okay, hold on. Hold on, guys. Let me go to my... Hold on one second. Da -da -da -da. Y'all bear with me one second. Okay, why come I can't... I can't find Snoop. Hold on. Yeah. Because there's a, a video of a dude. What the hell is Snoop Dogg? Snoop, Snoop Lion? Def Jam Snoop? Okay, hold on. Okay, why can't I find Snoop Dogg's page now? Well, now that I'm live, I can't find Snoop's page. Okay. But the video, it was a video of a dude he was um he he tracked his girl's phone he tracked his lady's phone and um hold on hold on hold on y'all y'all bear with me one second hold on he tracked his okay he is stupid okay i don't know why i can't okay yeah you asked me Okay. Let me try to find it real quick while I'm talking. This dude was tracking. Okay, here it is. Yeah. Let me go on Snoop's page one more time. I don't know. I couldn't find Snoop's uh, Hold on one second. I want to show y'all this video. Okay, there it is. All right. But this video is funny. All right, this right here. Right here. So this dude goes to his lady's. Um, well, no, he he had a, a phone. I think he had his chick's phone or something. And um, he tracked it to some dude's house. He's outside simping. Hold on. All right, this video right here. This this is funny. Hold on. Hold on. All right, if it loads up, come on. Hold on. Let me get your location, man. Let 
My phone is here. That means my girl is here. Nigga, okay. Now, brother, brother, listen. Don't do that, brother. <laughs> Let me talk to my, my young simps, my young simps out here, nigga. <laughs> Your ladies for the streets right now, brother. The minute you saw that it was at this dude's crib, that that just let it go. Let go and let God, nigga. You track your lady down. Duke, going to the dude's crib, that ain't gonna, that's, what you gonna say to him, dude? Look, once you've established that your lady's all up in this nigga's crib, you don't have anything to say to him. Why you leaving this nigga messages on the Ring app? You supposed to charge that to the game, brother. The minute the phone app gave you directions to the crib and you verified it was a dude's crib, just let go and let God, brother. Just, just let the streets have her. She's for the streets, bro. Just let it go. It's over. Going up to a nigga's ring app, menacing this nigga's crib. Just let it go, brother. You know, we we got to get some some Mac bones and some of your bodies out here, brother. Sometimes, man, you got to know how to charge some shit to the game. It hurts, but don't be that kind of simp. We don't need simp niggas like that, man. If your lady, if you don't track your phone to your lady's phone to another nigga's crib, it's a wrap. Let's let it go. Just let it go. Charge that thing to the game. Get you a new somebody. There's somebody for you. There's somebody out there who's going to love you for you. Yeah. Did y'all see this situation with Faith Evans and Stevie? Stevie J. Faith Evans. Hold on. Let me see if I can catch that video real quick. Where? Okay, hold on. Let me see if this is it. Hold on. People with 80. Okay, let me let me turn that down for a minute. Yeah, um, Faith Evans and Stevie J. There was a situation. Hold on, hold on. Where Stevie J. was accusing Faith of having a nigga all up in the bedroom, and he was going off on her, and she was saying she hate him and all this old stuff. And I, they got all this stuff in front of the video, so uh, I wish I had a cleaner version of it. Oh, <laughs> Uh, no, no. Yeah, damn. We lied. We lied. That's cool. We lied. That's it. I hate you. Please leave me alone. Please, I hate you. We lied. I hate you. That's cool. We lied. That's cool. Shit. F too. I ain't going nowhere. F too. I hate you too. Good. We in the business. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. You is on me in my own house, bitch. You bitch. You bitch. I'm in my house. F you. Bitch. <laughs> I heard you. <laughs> okay, so this I okay. All right, so now a lot of the women were like, "Well, that's what Stevie J gets. All that cheating he was doing with Jocelyn and what's her name." They were like, "That's what this nigga get." No, oh, it's not. I can, I, you know, I like these two, you know, and people were like, look, if she didn't fuck somebody in this nigga's bed and they're married, y'all know good and well she didn't fuck Tupac. She, she fucked him. She didn't bang Tupac too. Let's not, somebody said the city girls are up. That's kind of sad. That's kind of sad. So is Faith Evans for the streets? I mean, damn. These toxic relationships. And look, a lot of times people get in these, these toxic relationships based on how they were raised. Um, faith is in these toxic relationships. She had a black mother, white father. You know, those kind of situations are real janky from what I understand. I think she has a white father. I had a white father. And that's always funny style. Stevie J, he didn't grow up with his mother. It was something with Stevie J's mother. I don't know 
what happened if, if there was an abandonment thing I know that Stevie J was raised by his father do y'all know Stevie J's story I know that he was raised by his father his mother wasn't there I know his mother wasn't there I don't know if she abandoned him or something like that or she died I don't know but I know his mother wasn't there and a lot of that has to do with the way you know cats get into relationships with women if you you have a, a situation with your mother that's somewhat toxic if it was drugs or whatever you know, that's going to affect the way you deal with people and interact with people yeah you understand oh yeah the Stephanie Mills Shaka Khan versus is on I'm gonna check that out I'm gonna check that out and not to say that justifies anything we, we can't control what happened to us as children and I'm not saying that that justifies anything yeah it sounds like Iceberg Slim yeah Iceberg Slim had a had a pretty toxic relationship with his mother as well yeah when a lot of cats are not raised when you're not raised by a nurturing mother that really fucks with you when you don't have a nurturing maternal figure there for girl and boy that really really messes with you that really really messes with you psychologically we got to get our relationship game together but we have to understand why our relationships are not the way they should be this is why we never take our eye off of how systematic white supremacy impacts the way we interact with each other we have to understand why systematic white supremacy helps to create dusty hate ass niggas who can't see themselves challenging white supremacy so they want to turn their dust on another goddamn black person who's trying to get up out of a negative situation you understand yeah DMX that's another one his mother dropped him off at a damn group home that fucked with him psychologically all of his life out here in New York a lot of these cats that were dropped off at group homes and all that because that happened a lot you had a lot of these women back in the, the 70s and 80s who was on heroin and crack and all this old shit, and they would drop them. A lot of them came from immigrant backgrounds, so you didn't have roots where you could send them down south. A lot of times, you gotta understand, a lot of black folks from the south would move to the north, would move to you know Detroit, Chicago, New York, or whatever. If things got rough, they'll just send the kids down south. They'll send them back down to, to Georgia, back down to Alabama. Like with me, I was born in Detroit. My mother was fairly young. She was in her 20s when she had me. Um, things were getting a little crazy in Detroit. So she sent me down to Alabama with my grandmother first, but then she came down afterwards though. A few months after I was sent down there, my uncle took me down there when I was four or five years old. She came down afterwards. But a lot of times, when people in these cities like New York and places like that, especially if you come from an immigrant background, you don't have nobody to send your child to. If shit gets rough, you, you're not going to send your child back to another country that you didn't came, you didn't bounce from. You're not going to do that. You don't have any relatives down south who have any roots where you can send them to. So unfortunately, a lot of these folks, they'll go drop these babies off at a goddamn group home, which is a terror dome. And that really fucks these kids up, psychologically. You understand? So we have to understand this, man. Listen, we have to get into nurturing relationships with, with our families and with each other. We got to get off this damn, these folks off this damn narcotic. We got to stop playing. We got to learn how to fight systematic white supremacy in the same spirit of the Maroons. You understand? The Maroons, and this is why we're doing this movie, telling you how black folks who were focused would beat the odds. The Maroons weren't sitting around getting high, shucking and jiving. These brothers and sisters were not playing. They were bringing it to these white supremacist asses. And this is a story that has not been told. They don't want to tell you about black Maroons. This is why whenever I mention Maroons, a lot of black folks don't even know what that is. A lot of black people don't even understand what a Maroon is. 
but there were Maroons right here in North America who were swooping ass taking names. And we need to learn from them and get our strength and inf inspiration from those brothers and sisters. If please be a mentor to kids. That's what we're doing now. We are the maroon. Somebody hit it on the money. We're, that's what we're talking about in the movie. We're making that correlation between them and us. We still have that spirit. We still got that spirit. I can't wait for y'all to see the new movie. Um, we have Brother Phil Valentine. He's in it. Brother Kaba, he's in it. There's still more people I'm going to interview. There's some, some Gullah people I'm going to go out to see um, in a couple of weeks. Um, my brother Clyde Winters, I finally got his number. I'm going to hit him up tonight or tomorrow when I get back home. There's some people in Atlanta I want to get. Some more people in Atlanta I want to interview. We're going to start doing our reenactment scenes. That's going to be fun. Um, I know we're going to shoot some in L.A. We're going to shoot a lot down in Atlanta. We're trying to find some, some locations to film in Atlanta. Um, Shout out to brothers Red Pill and Blue Pill. Boy, those brothers came through. They, I brought them out to Savannah where we filmed their part. They dropped some heavy heat. These brothers dropped some heavy heat. We're talking about the Maroons and we're taking it all the way back to Spain. We're talking about the war between the white Christians and the black Moors, which really preceded a lot of the maroon conflicts over here. You understand? We're going deep. We're going back. And those brothers were breaking a lot of stuff down that was going on in Spain and some of the edicts that were being put out there. And um, we, we go deep. These brothers went real deep with very good documentation. And, man, I cannot wait for y'all to get this information, man. Yeah. Savannah, we had a great time in Savannah. We, we were filming by one of the slaves. It was a, there's a lot of parks in Savannah, these beautiful, well-maintained parks. And a lot of these places were slave markets. A lot of these places were where black people who were enslaved would go trade and do business. And um, you can really feel the energy, man. You can really feel the energy in Savannah. You can feel the trees and you, you can feel that. Shout out to um, Sister Pat, a Gullah Geechee sister who I interviewed for the film. She was breaking some good stuff down. Beautiful sister, wonderful sister. Um, great brothers and sisters in Savannah. Down home. Savannah, man, let me tell you something. Everybody should go visit Savannah. Savannah is such a beautiful city city full of black folk. Savannah reminds me of what Atlanta used to be in the 90s. Savannah, Georgia reminds me of what Atlanta was in the 90s. See, Atlanta is a little different now because you got a bunch of people in Atlanta now who ain't really from Georgia. The people from Georgia, I'm talking about from there, they have a whole different spirit, man, that is unmatched. And I'm not shitting on the, the, the people who are from other places either. I'm not, I'm not shitting on them. I'm just telling you, being around the people who are from there, they got that that Southern hospitality, man, that down home family spirit. You can't beat that shit. It's unmatched, man. It's unmatched. In Savannah, the brothers and sisters do, they, te they treat you like family out there. You feel like you kicking it with your cousins. You, you feel like you out there with your family, man. At the hotel we were at, the sisters at the hotel, they were so accommodating. They were hooking us up. They were... Um, hooking us up with the rooms early is just extremely accommodating now what's what's interesting a lot of folks found out i was there so folks started coming up to the the hotel <laughs> and they were showing love though the word got around that we were filming so everybody knew that we were filming there so folks was coming up to the hotel showing love which is kind of funny because i don't like you know when i'm staying at a hotel i don't i don't like folks to know where i am we were filming there were people coming up when I got on um, Instagram Live and I was filming at one of the parks and I was on the live. I was like, yeah, I'm out here in Savannah. And um, I didn't say where I was, but somebody recognized, people start recognizing the trees and some girl showed up, some lady. <laughs> said, hey, Tariq. And she was big breasted. She had some big breasted. She was like, hey, Tariq, I saw you here. Back away, 
Jezebel spirit. <laughs> this is nothing but the spirit of Jezebel up in here. <laughs> no, she was real nice, nice sister. Shout out to her. The big breastesses. <laughs> she has a big breastesses. He came. <laughs> we just kind of rolled up on a nigga. Hold on, what is this? Is this a trap? <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm, I'm like, hold on, okay, let me. All right. They're trying to get in some good trouble. Huh? <laughs> okay. Let me let me not say where I am. I don't yeah. <laughs> Okay. Shout out to Savannah. Shout out to Savannah. Y'all trying to get a nigga shanked when I get to the crib. Oh, I can't do that. You know? Because my wife be seeing every fucking thing, nigga. When I'm out somewhere and people be taking pictures of me and I don't even know, I'll be at the airport and somebody take a picture at me. Somebody take a picture of my ass. I don't even know somebody took a picture. Then they'll post it and tag it. And my wife will hit me up. You, what, you still in Memphis? How you know I'm in Memphis right now? I just saw a picture of you with, on Instagram. <laughs> okay, damn, Lexi. Inspector fucking Gadget. <laughs> Are you looking for a nigga? Are you searching a hashtag? My wife be searching hashtags for my ass. <laughs> ah, damn. Yeah, yeah, she like the paparazzi on my ass. See, the River Street, yeah, they kept telling us about River Street. I didn't go to River Street. I, uh, my, my camera guys, I think they went up there. And they were, one of them, we had to wake his ass up. We almost got, we were late for the flight almost. Cause his ass, I think he was out there on River Street getting his drink on. They do a documentary about black people, uh, white people adopting black kids. We're gonna touch on that in the new Buck Breaking. We're gonna touch on that in the new Buck Breaking movie. But yeah, Savannah's a beautiful city, man. I, I would advise everybody to go there. You, you, you did, just to visit the people. Wonderful folks. But anyway, let me get about here. I got to call my real estate agent and see what's going on with them. Family's been real. Again, uh, much respect, shout out, and condolences to the family of our brother, Young Dolph. Um, my brothers and sisters out there in Memphis, man, we got love for you. Um, we got to get some of the OGs out here to kind of dissipate the bullshit that's going on out there. This ain't it. This ain't it, family. We don't need to make the hood hot. We don't need all this bullshit going on right now because of uh, what happened to our brother and it should not have happened in the first place. So we gotta, let's snip all this in the bud and let's keep this thing player. Right now we got some big trials in this country that's going to try to solidify white supremacy, the Ahmaud Arbery trial, um, Rittenhouse, family, we gotta be focused. We can't be having that kind of heat on each other when you got these white supremacists trying to get their open carry game on our ass. We gotta be focused right now. We don't have time to be hitting up our brothers uh, on some rah-rah shit. We just don't have time right now, family. We're in a race war. We need to act like it. Family, hit the link below. Pre-order the book, Foundational Black American Race Beta. Pre-order the book right now, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the book will be out in a couple of weeks. Foundation of Black American Race Beta. Get the book now. Um, go to Spotify, stream the Mink Slide album, and I'm going to...